in this uh, video we'll talk about one more additional thing in this chapter and that is plant movements now this is a very important uh, aspect of plants because plants show movement they don't show locomotion locomotion is when the organism moves from one place to another that is termed as locomotion which is a characteristic feature of animals but movement means when the leaves move up and down or the petals open up these are all called movements even opening and closing of stomata is also considered a type of movement so we first want to see how we can classify these movements so first classification uh, is on the basis of what is responsible for this movement to take place is it for locomotion so we call it movement of locomotion and this would be seen only in certain plants where some locomotive structures are present we'll take certain examples so this can be the first type that is movement of locomotion and the second would be movement of curvature where some bending of some part, plant parts would take place in locomotion that structure is going to move from one place to another here it is going to be just curvature or which is you know resulting into some bending thing would take place this is further divided into two categories on the basis of the reason if this curvature is due to growth then we will call it movement of curvature due to growth and it could be due to variation and this variation here means turgor pressure due to the water uh, taking in that is endo or exosmosis so this is due to turgor force or turgor pressure so we can classify these into these two categories locomotion as we said it has to have the plant has to have some structure which is going to help in that movement from one place to another normally this is seen in case of male gametes of bryophytes and pteridophytes these male gametes are flagellate and they move from the male reproductive part or branch to the female gamete and that means they're swimming they're moving from one place to another so this is one way of classifying these movements the second way is on the basis of which type of stimulus do they respond to again here we will take two categories one is called autonomic movement this takes place when there is an external sorry internal stimulus internal stimulus and if the stimulus is external then that movement is known as paratonic movement so when plant or plant parts respond or show movement because of internal stimulus we we'll call it autonomic and if it is because of external stimulus then we call it paratonic movements and the third category is again the most important one on which we are going to be studying the detailed movements so here there are three categories tactic movements tropic movements and nastic movements these are the ones which we will be taking in detail so let us start with the first that is tactic movements now these tactic movements let us first understand which type of movements are these these are movements of locomotion so it is a movement of locomotion that means the structure which is going to show this movement has to have certain locomotive structures second important thing it is due to external stimulus 
that means it is a paratonic type of movement and third it is directional that means it is going to respond to the direction of the stimulus now if the stimulus is a chemical then that movement will be called chemotactic movement chemotactic movement that means the stimulus which is responsible for this kind of movement is a chemical and this is seen in case of the male gamete of bryophytes and ferns that is pteridophytes and this movement is due to a chemical the chemical is either sucrose or malic acid and this is produced by the female reproductive part that is archegonium produced by archegonium archegonium is the female reproductive part so female reproductive part produces chemicals like sucrose or malic acid and the male gamete responds or shows its movement because of these chemicals and the male gamete is going to move from the male reproductive part that is antheridium to the archegonium where the egg is situated that means it is moving locomoting from one part to the another and these male gametes they are flagellate so they can use those flagella to swim or locomote from the antheridium to the archegonium but their locomotion is stimulated by chemical and that is why it is called chemotactic movement we said it is movement of locomotion so the male gamete is locomoting from antheridium to archegonium it is due to external stimulus the stimulus is the chemical which is externally produced by the other part that is archegonium and it is directional that means the male gamete moves towards that chemical or it is attracted towards that chemical which is produced so this is chemotactic movement the second in this category would be phototactic movement and in this case light is going to be the stimulus we can take the example of clamido monas clamidomonas is a unicellular green alga and it is flagellate structure it is photo autotrophic that means it performs photosynthesis and it requires light for that process to take place that means if clamidomonas is present in a location and if from the other direction or from one direction light is provided then clamidomonas would swim towards light so again they are swimming so it is movement of locomotion external stimulus stimulus is the light in this case and it is directional because they are moving towards light and that is why we are calling it phototactic movement we can take one more example here and that is of euglena euglena is considered as a link between animal and plant kingdoms because it shows characters of plants as well as of animals the plant character which it shows is presence of chloroplast and euglena behaves like plants or it is uh, performing photosynthesis when light is available and it behaves like animals that is it starts eating other organisms when light is absent so if light is present euglena which is again a flagellate organism is going to swim towards light because in presence of light it is able to perform photosynthesis so if chemical is the stimulus chemotactic movement if light is the stimulus phototactic movement and similarly there is one more which is thermotactic that means here the temperature is going to be the stimulus so it has been observed 
that the cells with flagella migrate or locomote towards warmer temperature because we know in warmer conditions the enzymatic activities are going to be optimum. So this is one type. This is the tactic movement that we have talked of. Now let us talk of the other two that is tropic and nastic movements. Let us now talk about the second type that is the tropic movements. Tropic movements are growth movements. That means whenever a plant part grows or moves in a particular direction, that is when we are talking of growth. And if growth is taking place, then that means it is irreversible. So because of growth, it is irreversible type. It takes place in response to external stimulus and it is directional and here when we talk of direction this can be positive also and negative also that means some part can move towards the stimulus or move away from the stimulus so we will use the term positive and negative in this case. Now if the external stimulus is light, then that movement would be called phototropic movement. That means the stimulus is light and the movement is taking place in response to light. In this case, if we take the example of stem, then stems are positively phototropic. We have seen that stem tip, they bend towards light. So these are positively phototropic. So external stimulus is light. It is moving towards light and that is why we are calling it positively phototropic. Whereas if we take the example of roots, then roots move away from light and they're going to grow towards the darker part or the center of gravity. So we say they are negatively phototropic. So one is positive, one is negative. So this is positively phototropic and roots are negatively phototropic. There are certain exceptions also. Like in case of pneumatophores, the respiratory roots the roots, the pointy structures which we call pneumatophores, they come above the ground for respiration. So that is going to be an exception. But in general, stems are positively phototropic. That means they move towards light. And this is growth movement. That means it is going to be irreversible. So if a plant, uh, if a stem tip bends towards light, then that stem would remain in that position. Uh, let us understand this. Suppose this is the stem tip and it is bending towards the light source. This is the light source. And now after some time, we change the direction of the light source. Then what is going to happen? The stem which showed growth in this direction. Now you're shifting the light source in the opposite direction. So the growth will now take place like this. So the stem is showing, uh, going to show such kind of bends and curves because it is always going to grow towards the source of light. So this is for phototropic. If the second stimulus, if we take the other stimulus as gravity, then we will call it geotropic movement. So second is geotropic movement. Again, the stimulus is external and that is the gravity, the force of gravity. In this case, again, if we take the example of stem, stems move away from the center of gravity. So we will call it negatively geotropic. They are negatively geotropic. And if we talk about the roots, the roots, they grow towards the center of gravity and that is why we call them 
positively geotropic. Again, we will take the same example of pneumatophores. These pneumatophores are moving or coming out of the ground surface. So that is an exception. They are positively, pneumatophores if we are talking of, they are positively phototropic and negatively geotropic. But that is applicable only in case of exceptions. Here we are talking about the general things. If temperature is the stimulus, then that movement will be called thermotropic movement. If the stimulus is hard touch, then it will be called thigmotropic movement. So the names would be given on the basis of the stimulus. Like if we talk of thigmo, we know that the tendrils, they coil around any hard object and they help the plant to climb up. So if there is a tendril and say this is the support on which the tendril has to coil. So when the tendril comes in contact with this hard object, it coils closer to this. That means it keeps moving around that hard object. So it is the movement of growth and that is why they are able to take a circular path or they coil around that hard object and because of growth movement it is irreversible. So depending upon the stimulus we give these movements names and again it is because of external stimulus and directional. So sometimes the movement takes place towards the stimulus. We call it positive and if movement is seen uh, in the opposite direction, that is away from the stimulus, then we will call it negative type of movement. Growth movement due to external and because they are growth movement, they are irreversible movements. So this is the second type. Now in the next segment, we will talk about the third, that is the nasty.